Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support, please subscribe. The dangers of childbirth in Tudor, England. In today's society, with the miracle of modern medicine, childbirth is openly discussed and celebrated. But in Tudor, England, it was a completely different affair. Pregnancy and birth were seen as dangerous. In an already cruel and unsafe world, women of all ages and backgrounds were not immune to the risks that childbirth carried. Sadly, the risks did not disappear after the birth, for the complications that could arise afterwards did not discriminate young mothers, older mothers, poor or rich mothers. All could die in either the birth of their child or the after. And sadly, more than one in three women died during their childbearing years. Today, a woman would suspect she was pregnant when she missed her period, and would then be able to confirm this with a pregnancy test and a visit to the doctor. But in the 1500s, a woman would not know she was pregnant for certain until around five months gestation. This is because the baby's movements would then be felt for the first time, and this was known as quickening. It's astounding to think that a woman would have not known she was pregnant until so far along. But like I've previously mentioned, there was no reliable test for pregnancy during this period. A woman may have turned to a doctor to see if she was pregnant, but the tests were far from reliable. One pregnancy test during the Tudor period was to examine the colour of the urine, and if it was a pale yellow to a white colour with a cloudy surface, the woman may have been pregnant. Other tests involved examining a needle left in the woman's urine to see if it rusted, or also to see what happened when wine was mixed with the woman's urine. Also, a woman's lack of regular menstruation could be related to several factors including illness, breastfeeding, excessive fasting, or even a poor diet. Today, when a woman is pregnant, she can be seen by a medical practitioner who can monitor the baby's health and heartbeat. But in the 16th century, a woman would heavily rely on older, experienced ladies to help and support them. Childbirth was predominantly a woman's business, and physicians and doctors only attended under the most extreme circumstances, such as in Queen Jane Seymour's case, when she was giving birth to the future king and had problems. More commonly, if a woman had the funds or contacts, she would have sought advice and support from a midwife, a woman who had a great deal of experience and knowledge in delivering babies. Interestingly, there are a few accounts of what giving birth was like for the everyday Tudor woman, but birth was a private affair, and women did not keep diaries and record their lives. However, if a queen gave birth, the whole country would know about it, for she could be giving birth to the heir to the English throne. It is therefore important to focus our attention on the lives of the women in the public eye and try to understand pregnancy and childbirth in Tudor England, for they are the only ones to have had the experiences recorded in the history books. A queen, for example, would close herself off from the world for a set period of time before the birth, this was commonly known as lying in. There would even be an elaborate service where God would be asked for his blessing by the church. After the service and the prayers from the clergy, the queen went into her private rooms. The common woman may have gone to church or sought the blessing from the priest before she too removed herself from the public eye for her own lying in. Other women, sadly those of the much lower class, may have had to work right up until they went into labour, as there was no one to cover their daily responsibilities. There was a strict rule of no men being allowed into the private rooms, and it was only women who could attend the pregnant woman. These rooms would have been closed off, tapestries would be hung from the walls, and the rooms were made to be as dark as possible with minimal natural light. There was a belief at the time that too much light could damage an expectant mother's eyes. The room would also be filled with images that were thought to be calming and in turn not upset the woman or harm the unborn child. There was also a collection of religious items in the room that would have been there to bring spiritual support to the mother. The whole idea behind these practices was to recreate the womb, warm, 
dark and quiet. During the beginning half of the Tudor era, England was a Catholic nation. Religion and faith were extremely important in everyday life, and it was considered to be interlinked with childbirth. An interesting concept held during this time was that the pain and discomfort associated with childbirth and labour were due to Eve's fall from grace in the Garden of Eden, and how her sin meant that all women would go on to suffer pain. As such, pain relief or a form of relief was forbidden to uphold this belief. Women were expected to turn to God, who would provide them with support and the relief they greatly desired. There was also the strong possibility that a mother in labour could die, so religion and faith played a hugely important role within the role of childbirth. Faith played a huge part in a woman's labour and birth as well. It brought great comfort in a time of fear and pain, and women used holy relics and prayers and chants to help them. Amber would be placed onto a mother's stomach, or even prayer rolls wrapped around the stomach to help with the pains of labour and to help with the safe delivery of their baby. It's even believed that some mothers would hold onto pieces of cheese or tin or butter that would have charms engraved into them. The church would have approved of these, as they called upon God and that which he created. Many women called upon St Margaret, the patron saint of pregnant women and childbirth. St Margaret was eaten by a dragon, but spat out again due to the crucifix she had been holding. It was hoped that babies would be delivered as easily as St Margaret had come out of the dragon. Although physically, these things could not have assisted in the birth, the faith and belief that women had in them would have helped them psychologically and could have helped them deal with their fear and worries over childbirth. Another woman who would have played a very important part in this process of labour and birth was the midwife. Unlike today, when a midwife would have had access to medical equipment and training, in the 16th century, a midwife would be a woman who had had years of experience in delivering babies. She was expected to be of good character and be trustworthy, having to take an oath which dictated that she would not keep anything from the childbirth, such as the umbilical cord or the placenta, which could possibly be used in witchcraft. The whole role of the midwife might have been to just suggest different ways to deliver the child, such as sitting in a birthing stool or being cradled from behind, the midwife also had knowledge on how to turn a child if it was not in the right position to be delivered. It's interesting though, if you examine Tudor text to see what was said about the events of childbirth, most of these are written by men and many of whom were clergy or members of the church and had no experience in childbirth at all. It's quite ironic if you think about it, as these men all took vows of celibacy they had never had sex or even entered the birthing chamber. Many men also believed that female organs were just male organs turned inwards. A woman throughout the majority of time has been seen as inferior to a man, and their reproductive organs are no different. A woman's reproductive organs were seen as an imperfect version of the male sexual organs, as they are turned inwards inside of the body. A woman was seen to be cold and wet, with a man as hot and dry, resulting in the belief that a woman needed the dry hot seed of a man to balance her. In today's society, with the wonders of modern day medicine and medical research, it is known that the sex of a baby is determined by the father, but in Tudor England there was a belief that a woman could choose the sex of her baby through the food she ate, or the things she drank and the medicines that she concocted people in Tudor England had no concept that it was in fact the male sperm that dictated the sex of a child, and it all lay heavily upon the shoulders of a woman. Now it's also important to remember, when reading texts from this era in relation to childbirth, that what happened behind closed doors would not have been what was written. It would have been more like what happened today, with the midwife supporting and providing advice to the pregnant mother and helping to deliver the child. Something that did filter down to the delivery room from its effects on the church was the English Reformation. Holy relics and Catholic practices were destroyed, so many women no longer had the physical aspects of their faith to draw comfort and support from. Women were also banned from promising to go on pilgrimages for the safe delivery of their unborn child. 
Instead of relying upon the saints and relics, women were only allowed to call upon God for support and help. But with that being said, there is a belief that a woman would have still turned to her faith, just without the knowledge of others in the community. Now after the immediate birth of a baby, if the mother and child survived, they were not quite out of the danger zone. And because of this, a midwife was in certain circumstances allowed to baptise a baby. For if the baby was sickly or close to death, it would enable the child's soul to go to heaven. This act was thought to remove the natural skin and cleanse the soul. This was the only time that a woman was allowed to deliver one of the sacraments, and it was only allowed if the child was going to pass. Caesarean sections were not a common occurrence and were only performed if the mother had died in the hope of saving the unborn child. The loss of a child, no matter the time, is traumatic and the experience has a huge emotional impact on both the mother and the family. Mothers giving birth in the past have created generations. Many families went on to be large despite the dangers that women faced. Men believed that a woman's one and only purpose in life was to get pregnant and have babies, to continue the family line. And because of how dangerous childbirth actually was, many women even wrote their wills before the labour, in case the worst happened. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.